about, I'm talking about American poor people, which are not poor people by world standards. Oh, poop. I didn't mean to drop a pumpkin. I was just trying to close the gate. Where people don't have access to water, even. That kind of thing. By world standards, I'm at least middle class. I know this. Um, only by uh, Western standards am I considered poor. I have a lot more goodies and a lot more access to resources and stuff than a lot of other people in other parts of the world. I'm very conscious of this. People are expected to uh, go through garbage and stuff like that to find enough to eat or wear or building materials. I mean, I do that too, but it's more about sustainability and convenience because I could save up money and go to a thrift store but if I can find stuff in the trash, it's sustainable. We waste a lot of stuff in this country. And a lot of the stuff I own is trash. And I can sell it too. People, if I fix that stuff up, I can sell trash. And people will buy it. Oops, I've got more than 64 blocks. Oh well. And, or turn it into something else. That's part of being resourceful. Is like trash can be used for art for instance you know simple things like newspapers can be turned into paper mache stuff like that but I see around me people who have been victimized by a system in whose best interest it is for us to need their help uh, oh sandstone either to uh, supply resources and materials that we need that we could acquire for ourselves but just don't know how or don't think we can or are intimidated by the process and don't know that it's possible um, but somebody will sell us that service if we are dumb enough not to know and most of us don't know it's not because we're dumb it's because we're intimidated out of it there's stigmas against like going through trash oh my gosh you want to get stigmatized be a trash picker I had two uh, sex workers in the war zone look down over a balcony at me once at an apartment complex where I was going through the dumpster. I still have the coffee pot I found. It was a Black & Decker coffee pot. And they were ridiculing me, chanting, trash picker, trash picker. And I held up that coffee pot and I said, you see this? This is $10 at least to buy this coffee pot that's one blow job and I didn't have to risk a sexually transmitted disease or a beating to get this so you go ahead and laugh and I really meant that I wasn't trying to stigmatize them because they were doing sex work it's just that I knew that there was another alternative that was less dangerous and that was picking in the trash and I make just about the best coffee. Oh, I, I do. I really do. I make about the best coffee of anybody out here that doesn't just hang out at Starbucks or something. And frankly, Starbucks isn't that good. Frankly, I'm... Whoops. You guys let me in. Frankly, I'm kind of glad that I live in poverty. Um, in one respect, because I see opportunities... At, um, and resources that other people don't see and I think I ought to start teaching that because I know some really fundamental stuff about sustainability that other people just don't seem to see so I wondered if people would be at all interested in hearing some of my experiences of poverty because I, I see people around me that are I'm frustrated by how hamstrung they are by the finances of their own lives and I could see really simple solutions to what they're going through that um, could easily be solved by thinking a little bit outside the box or learning to repurpose stuff like not having um, running water gee whiz if I ever lived in a house again my water bill would be darn near nothing plus I have to heat whatever water I use for bathing or dishes so nothing gets squandered there's not even a pilot light burning on a water heater or something and if you would be interested in hearing some stuff about what i've learned as a result of my poverty i mean it's environmentally interesting and it's um health wise you know like the whole eating and cooking and 
not driving a car most of the time thing and alternative transportations and how to take care of your own health like I know to go to feed stores and pet stores to get antibiotics in case I get an infection so that I can make myself healthy again almost all my neighbors have cell phones and they have cable TV now I don't know how much cell phones cost but let's pretend it costs thirty dollars a month that sounds reasonable doesn't it so alternative forms of transportation alternative ways of cooking uh, that are more healthful than what I see around me all the prepackaged junk the factory food I mean everything we eat pretty much comes from a factory the meats the produce everything factory farming and so on and so forth but because I'm more sensitive to and knowledgeable about nutrition I think I have a higher quality of diet than almost everybody around me now I don't know I haven't had cable TV in oh 20 years or more I think cable TV runs about well let's say $30 okay that's 60 bucks and I know that's real conservative their bill for phone and cable TV must be closer to a hundred dollars a month well I definitely can't afford that but I do have internet that just went up from 30 to 40 dollars a month I'm no longer in isolation I have friends all over the world I can shop online and have things delivered here if I need to which I haven't had to do I've, I've had to do that in other places I've lived but I haven't had to do that here um, I have access to libraries and data and research so that I can research stuff like how to take care of my physical health um, and how to repair things and like I've got a schematic now for a solar water heater that I plan to build in the spring it could go on the roof of the camper and I'll have hot water on demand anytime there's been sun for a few hours during the day <coughs> it would also help keep my pipes from freezing instead of being spoon-fed the bullshit that's on cable TV and I don't understand cable TV you're paying to watch TV and you still have to watch commercials doesn't make sense to me so there is no television in my life but I watch all kinds of really cool movies and stuff and between YouTube and Hulu and Vimeo and other places I watch more interesting stuff than most of the other people around me do I'm up on most of the latest Asian horror movies and I've watched most of the uh, video conferences from the last Skepticon and I get to see all the curiosity activity on the NASA website hello you guys gonna have more babies because it looks like you're thinking about it they're creepy aren't they um so would anybody be interested in hearing some of my experiences as a low-income person and how I do stuff so let me know if you would like to hear about my adventures as a low-income person and some of the stuff I've learned because I really think I might know some useful information and everybody's so stressed out with the economy the way it is it just seems to me it would make sense if I passed on some of what I knew because you guys are having a hard time too I didn't have snowballs so I can make me some er snow golems but I think my last snow golem melted I'm not sure there's a view out my back door it would be nicer if I didn't have that tree but it's nice to have the wood right there you know so plus I want a few cooties growing out here so when I get brave and turn the cooties on like uh, I need spider web which is why I'm taking that temple apart so carefully so I can have all the string because I want to build a fishing pole and put a carrot on the end of it so I can ride a pig because that would be a lot faster than walking and fun all right that's it I'm done I'll see you in the funny papers have a nice whatever you're having